Hey and welcome back. We are doing the last video of the Clutterbug series where I talk about all four different organizing styles. So make sure you check out the link to all the other videos so you can know exactly what organizing type you are. Today we're talking about the ladybug. As a ladybug, you're a hidden organizer, so you want your everyday things out of sight. You're craving visual simplicity, but you also don't do details. Let's be honest, you need really fast solutions. If something's hard to put away, you just won't. You'll shove it in a drawer or maybe just put it down, but you're definitely not going to open a lid to put something away every day or use a detailed filing system, and there's nothing wrong with that. I have a special soft spot in my heart for ladybugs because I am one. I am 100% a ladybug and I felt messy my whole life because I'm not a detailed person. I don't love sorting things into lots of categories. I don't like planners. I don't like planning. I'm more of like a fly by the seat of my pants type person and so are most of the ladybugs that I've met. We just don't do well with a lot of details, but that's okay. We need systems that are so easy, we might as well put it away rather than put it down. As a ladybug, you probably have a really tidy home on the outside. Ladybugs crave visual simplicity, so you probably don't have a lot of clutter out and ladybugs really want things put away. We hide things away, but we need fast, easy, simple solutions. I can diagnose a ladybug faster than any other organizing style. I can walk into your home in two seconds and know if you're a ladybug because A, everything looks really, really tidy until I B, open a closet or a drawer and then everything's shoved, it's a hot mess, and there's no rhyme or reason. Like, you have nothing on your surfaces and everything in your closet. Think Monica closet from Friends, right? Everything looks so put together, but it's a hot mess behind closed doors, which is why I named a ladybug the ladybug style, because the shell of a ladybug you know, the actual insect is beautiful and shiny and perfect. And then its wings open up and they're all jacked and crinkled underneath. That's like a euphemism for our homes, right? Let's be honest. And the reason we're struggling is because we just don't do detailed organization. We don't do filing cabinets. If something's hard to put away, we won't. So what works for a ladybug? It's simple. It's baskets. We gotta be basket cases. We need baskets and bins everywhere so we can still open the closet and shove it and toss it and open the drawers and hide things away, but everything has a home to be caught in. The baskets catch it and keep it separated. So when I'm done with an aspirin, I open up my closet and I toss it into the bin labeled medication. I don't mind going through the bin and digging around to find the aspirin later. I have to put it away fast. And this is the same for butterflies and ladybugs. We need simple organization. We need zero lids. We need to be able to put things away in a second. Not only is the ladybug the most common organizing style, most people are ladybugs, but it's also the easiest to organize for because one trip to the dollar store for lots of bins and baskets is all you need. Every closet should have bins. Every drawer should have drawer dividers. Every place you naturally hide and shove things have containers to catch it. Now you may have grown from closets and, and dresser drawers to your basement started filling up and now you have a spare bedroom or that Monica closet where everything is just like a ah, hot mess. The only way to dig yourself out of this problem, ladybugs, is to declutter. But once you've let go of all the things you're not using and loving, organization for a ladybug is so simple because it's based on simple solutions. It's literally just some big old baskets with big categories so we can toss things away in seconds. When we think of organizing our medication, we think we should organize by pain reliever and antacid and create different categories for all these little things, but that's exactly what doesn't work for you because you don't need to find something quickly. You need to put it away fast. You don't mind going in the bin and hunting for the antacid. You need to be able to put it away in seconds. Whereas the other organizing styles don't mind taking a few seconds to stop and think about where something goes because they want to find it fast. This is the big 
difference. You have to broaden your categories so that you can toss things away in seconds. Because as soon as you have to stop and think where something should go, even for a second, you're just gonna put it down. A quick tip for ladybug organization is to think of your home in zones and big categories. So gather all your light bulbs together and have one basket for light bulbs or all your medication and gather those extra products. It's okay to have dental in with extra shampoo and extra toothpaste because it's all extra products. Think about your categories in a less detailed approach, big baskets with big labels. That is the secret to long-term success. If you're looking for some ladybug organizing inspiration, obviously you can check out my channel because I'm totally a ladybug, but also here on YouTube, Dawn from The Minimal Mom is a ladybug and Catherine from Do It On A Dime is a ladybug. One look at their channel and you can see how they need simple, big categories, lots of baskets to maintain a tidy home. I'll put a link down below to their channel so that you can check them out. And thanks so much for watching. I hope you're feeling really inspired to try getting organized again and to focus on those hidden areas of your home that are catch-alls. Some simple baskets is really all you need. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out the links below to all the different videos for the different organizing styles so you can really understand what works for you. And more importantly, you can know what works for everyone living in your home so you can set up a compromise that stays organized for good. Thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So for this series, I'm just resharing old stories that I've already shared with you, my most embarrassing moments of all time. I think this, it's the car wash story. I know I've shared it. I may have shared it more than once, but I still have PTSD every time I drive past this car wash. This is my, it's so ridiculous. I wish I had this on video because I'd be so rich and famous right now for being such an idiot. So we, my two girls are in the back and we're out shopping for the day and my van is disgusting because I'm a ladybug and nobody sees inside my van so it's gross, filled with nasty stuff, but the outside's also gross. So I'm going through a car wash and you know the car wash that you like, you drive into the track and then you put it in neutral and it drags you through? It was a really busy day, like spring, just nice outside, so I waited forever in line and I get up and I punch in my code and then I put it in neutral and it doesn't drag me through. And somebody's honking behind me, you know, and it's like, Please put your car in neutral. I'm like, I'm trying thing, but I wasn't in the track. So it wasn't pulling my wheel forward because I was over too far. But there's like 50 cars behind me. That's probably an exaggeration, but enough to cause my anxiety. Like, is this what's happening now? Do I have to get out? Do all these cars have to back up? What's gonna happen? So I panic and I say to myself, I'm just gonna drive through really slow. You know, I know I'm not in the track, but I'm just gonna put it in drive and slowly, what could, what could, what could happen? Except you know what could happen? As I start driving through, those brushes on the side um, are pretty much perfectly spaced. So because I'm a foot over here, it's whamming, whamming on the van. You know, the beater bars and the whole van's rocking and the girls are screaming and there's soap all over my car and I'm panicking and I'm freaking out. So what do I do? I say, I gotta get in this track. So I gas it forward so I can get up and over the track so my tire can get in it, except I gas it too far and I go up over and now I'm kind of sideways, which means the front is getting bammed by the brushes and the back's getting bammed by the brushes and the van is shaking and it's insane and the girls are screaming their bloody heads off. So I back up into the machine and I forward into the machine and back into the machine and forward to try to get straight and I just drive straight out of that car wash covered in rainbow soap, windshield wipers going and I turn back and the girls are covered in soap because the back windows of the van were cracked open. You know how they vent? And because we were sideways, the soap's flying in. Oh my God, my van was so scratched, so dented. The whole side had to be repaired. The whole front was smashed. I probably broke that car wash if I'm being honest. I should have, I just drove. That's bad karma, I know. It's probably, I probably did like a million dollars in damage. I'm such a dick. They have insurance, so it's fine. But anyways, that was my most embarrassing moment and I still feel sweaty just thinking about it. Anyways, I don't know why I shared that with you. I'll see you guys next time.